how are you doing today? I hope that you are doing amazing and fantastic and wonderful. So today's video is all about the cozy releases for June. That's right. I can't believe it. It's already June, but you know what that makes me? That makes me super happy because my last day of work is June 11th, which means I will be on break and it'll be nice and fantastic. And I'm super excited about it. So the very first book that I'm talking about comes out on June 1st, and that is The Bombay Prince, a Praveen mystery novel. This is book three by Shujata Masi. I, it, I love this. It's diverse. It's historical. It's going to be fantastic. Bombay's first female lawyer, Praveen mystery. I love that last name. It's fantastic. Oh, I'm, oh, okay. Calm myself. Whoa, Courtney. All right. She is compelled to bring justice to the family of a murdered female, a Parsi student, as just as Bombay streets erupt in riots to protest British colonial rule. Sujata Masi is back in this third installment to the Agatha and Mary Higgins Clark award-winning series set in 1920s Bombay. <sighs> November 1921, Edward the uh, Eighth, Prince of Wales and future ruler of India, is arriving in Bombay to begin a four-month tour. The Indian subcontinent is chafing under British rule, and Bombay solicitor Praveen Mystery isn't surprised when local unrest over the rule uh, over the rule arrival royal arrival uh, spirals into riots, but. She's horrified by the death of Frinny Cutting Master, an 18-year-old female Parsi student who falls from a second floor gallery just as the prince's grand procession is passing by her college. Frinny had come for a legal consultation just days before her death, and what she confides makes Praveen suspicious that her death was not an accident. Um, feeling guilty over failing to have helped Frenny in life, Praveen steps forward to assist Frenny's family in the fraught dealings of the coroner inquest. When Fernie's death appears suspicious, Purveen knows she can't rest until she sees justice done. But Bombay is erupting as armed British Secret Service march the streets. Rioters attack anyone with perceived British connections and desperate shopkeepers destroy their own wares so they will not be targets of racial violence. Can Purveen help a suffering family when her own is in danger? This is very, very much just, it kind of hits home exactly with the different things that are going on in the world right now. I, I am really, really, I, I want to get into this series. It looks fantastic. Uh, the next book I have is Death on the Night of Lost Lizards, and Hungarian Tea House Mystery Series. This is the third in the series by Julia Buckley, and it comes out on June 1st as well. Along with her mother and grandmother, Hannah Keller has achieved renowned serving or er, has achieved renowned serving tea and cake with European flair. Um, but when a local professor is killed, she's uncovered she uncovers a serving of suspects instead. Hannah Keller is getting ready for a lovely holiday season. When she receives a rare tea set as a birthday gift, she decides to host a tea at her apartment for her closest friends. During the cozy get-together, one of Hannah's friends gets word that a murderer is on the loose. Hannah learned that the victim was Sandor Balog, a professor of Hungary Hungarian studies at the local college. With her growing psychic ability, Hannah senses that she is going to be pulled into the investigation of the professor's death somehow. With her sexy boyfriend Eric on the case, Hannah finds the tea house steeped in suspects. She studies the smiling faces celebrating the season, but the real killer is good at hiding the truth and putting Hannah in the hot seat. I just, Julia Buckley's covers are always just so colorful and just really, really pretty. Um, the next book I have is by one of my absolute favorite authors. This is the second book of the Book Lovers B&B Mystery series. It's Reserved for Murder by Victoria Gilbert, and it comes out on June 8th. Ah, it says, meeting your favorite author in the flesh can be a chance of a lifetime. But for one unlucky fan, her plum place in, at, er, in line at the book sighting will lead to her ultimate demise. Beaufort, New North Carolina is home to Chapters Bed and Breakfast, owned and operated by former school teacher Charlotte Reed. That is a dream job. Dream job. Um, 
The historic 18th century inn draws in voracious readers from far and wide with its lovingly curated special events celebrating a host of genres and authors. On this sunny July weekend, a visit by one of the biggest names in romantic fantasy attracts throngs of admirers to the quaint coastal village. That's not ideal, as the author related to chapters to get away, or retreated to chapters to get away from it all for a while. No matter, she will appease her fans with a tea and talk. Meet and greet at the B&B, celebrating her best-selling series starring the devilishly handsome time-traveling pirate. Um, follow that up with a quick book signing at Bookwaves, the hip indie bookstore across town, and spend the remainder of the weekend in delightful repose. But when the president of the reclusive writers fan club is found dead in the harbor in, by the Beaufort docks, done in by blunt forced trauma blow to the head, it's up to Charlotte Reed, her neighbor Ellen, and Ellen's trusty Yorkshire terrier to sniff out the killer. That looks good, guys. The next one. I'm so excited for. It's a baker's dozen. It is Mocha She Wrote. This is the th book 13 in the Bake Shop Mystery series by Ellie Alexander. You guys already know, I have it pre-ordered. Because I'm always going to have it pre-ordered. Always. If you don't pre-order your favorite authors, you should start pre-ordering. All right. Summer has ushered in a new season in the charming hamlet of Ashland, Oregon. Tortas bustling with tourists, taking in star-drenched shows at the Elizabethan, setting out to hike in the surrounding Sisiku Mountains, and sampling the bake shop summer lineup of raspberry lemon tarts. Raspberry lemon tarts sounds so good right now. And mint moho cold brews. Jules and the team are buzzing with excitement when they learn that Andy, I love Andy, Torts Head Barista has been selected to compete in the West Coast Barista Cup. The prestigious uh, competition draws coffee aficionados up and down the coast to Ashland. The winner will not only claim to be best in brew, but also awarded a hefty cash prize. Andy's nerves about his chances. Angie, Andy's nervous about his chances. But Jules is confident with her star barista that he will shine. However, things take a grim turn when the head judge, Benston Vargas, spits out Andy's first offering, claiming it to be the worst thing ever to touch his lips. And hours later, it's found dead, clutching Andy's creamy latte. Suddenly, Tort's favorite barista becomes the number one suspect. No, there's no roast for the weary. Jules will have to sleuth out the whodunit to clear Andy's name and catch the killer before she ends up with one foot in the grounds. Bum bum bum. I, I have pre-ordered. I'm so excited. So excited. Okay, and that came out, that comes out on June 29th. And here's the last book. This also comes out on June 29th. It is A Glimmer of a Clue, a fairy garden mystery series. This is book two in the series by Daryl Wood Garber. I love garden cozies, guys. Magical garden cozies even more. They're just, they're soft spots. When Courtney, Courtney, not spelled my way, but that's okay. When Courtney's friend Wanda gets into a ponytail pulling wrestling match in a public with a nasty local art critic, Courtney stops the fight with the help of a garden hose. But Lana Lamar has a talent for escalating things and creating tension, which she succeeds in doing by threatening a lawsuit, getting into yet another scuffle, and in the midst of an elegant fundraiser, no yes, and lobbing insults around like picket balls. Next thing Courtney knows, Lana is on the floor, stabbed with a decorative letter opener from uh, one of Courtney's fairy gardens. And Wanda is standing by asking, what have I done? But the answer may not be as obvious as it seems, since Wanda is prone to sleepwalking, appears to be in a daze. Could she have risen from her nap, committed murder while unconscious? Or is the guilty party someone else Lana's ticked off with her long suffering, like her long suffering husband? To find out, Courtney will have to dig up some dirt some great chef kiss kind of cozies coming out in June. Did I miss any that you are super, super excited about? Let me know down below because we all know that we could always add more to our ever-growing TBR. But that's the end of this chapter of Courtagonist. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, happy reading. Bye.